Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron. We're going to be looking at one of the passages that really convinced me that the Septuagint, by and large, was not a pre-Christian invention, but something that occurred during the time of the apostles or soon thereafter. So this is from brandpluck.com, Will Kenny. So just bear with me as I read some of it. We'll make some comments as we go. Thanks for being here. Do check out our other videos and our podcast. Pray for us. I've been having enormous technical difficulties making these videos. Many of you know last year I had incredible health problems making these videos. But we're trying to get God's truth to be more fully known in the world. And that is our goal. We love you. So let's get started. In the Epistle to the Romans, the Apostle Paul makes a list of Old Testament quotes showing the depravity of man and his rebellion against God. These citations are taken from various Old Testament books, and all of them can be found scattered throughout the Hebrew text. And this is Romans 3, 10 through 18. And this happens, you know, like Mark 1, 1 and 2, it'll have Malachi 3, 1, with Isaiah 40 and stuff like that. So now the Hebrew texts do not contain these nine verses in Romans listed one after another in any place. Instead, they're scattered throughout the Psalms in the book of Isaiah. So Romans 3, 10 through 18 says, as it's written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Keeps going on through 318. There's no fear of God before their eyes from Psalm 36, 1. The previous verse, Isaiah 59, 8 previous verse of that, Isaiah 59, 7, as is 3, 15, 10, 7, is Romans 3, 14, on and on and so forth. In the Hebrew text, both Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 read basically the same in the first three verses, and then the remaining content of each differs considerably. There are two different Psalms. In the Hebrew text, Psalm 14 reads as it does in the King James Bible. This is the reading of all Jewish translations, including the 1917 Jewish Publication Society, the 1936 Hebrew Publishing Company version, the Judaica Press Tanakh, and the Complete Jewish Bible of 1998. So to read the Geneva Bible, the Revised Version, ASV, RSV, NRSV, ESV, NIV, NASB, NKG, and the Holman Standard, this is, they all read that way. It's also highly significant in the modern Greek Old Testament. Now it admits these extra verses too and follows the Hebrew readings instead of the previous LXX version. However, the Greek Septuagint, which is basically Vaticanus, greatly expands Psalm 14 verse 3 and adds six entire verses word for word taken from the New Testament book of Romans 3, 13 through 18. I'm astounded, this is William Kinney, that some would point to Psalm 14 in the LXX version and claim that Paul was using this Greek translation when he composed the book of Romans. I guess people believe what they want to believe. Rather, it seems to me proof positive, me too, that the present day LXX version took the already complete New Testament writings and transplanted them back into their Greek translation. So it's, it's obvious that the writer of the Septuagint in Psalm 14 had Romans 3 in front of him. It wasn't something from pre-Jesus. And so even the Hebrew and Greek critical apparatus that at one time the Greek critical apparatus of the Old Testament included this in Psalms, they've taken it out because they realize it as well, giving a total devastation to the fact that there was a unified Septuagint that was perfect from 275 B.C., if, and I'll go back to Kinney. If the original LXX translator, Septuagint, had made their translation with the Hebrew text way back in 300 BC, as all Septuagint promoters allege, then where did they get these at additional six old verses and place them word for word in their translation of Psalm 14 when no Hebrew text reads even remotely like this? 
The simple answer is they got them directly from Romans 3, 10 to 18 after the New Testament was already complete. So that is pretty amazing. So God bless. Thanks for being with us. Join us daily. Pray for us, please, that God would let the making of these videos and podcasts be smooth so God's truth can go throughout the world. I'm greatly appreciative for the many years God's let us be on YouTube. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.